Hello guys, let's do an example on calculating the enthalpy change during temperature and phase changes. So, we need to calculate the enthalpy change when we are converting one mole of ice at minus 50 degrees Celsius to water at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atm pressure. And we are given the specific heats of ice, water, and steam. And we are also given the delta age of fusion and delta age of vaporization. Now, to start this, I'm going to draw out a heating curve. So, in a heating curve, I'm going to have the temperature on this side in degrees Celsius and the heat added on this side, heat added. And I'm going to start at minus 50 degrees Celsius. Let's say that that's right here. So I'm starting with ice and I'm going to start adding heat to it. So warming it up, up to... 25 degrees Celsius or something else. Zero degrees, right? Because water actually melts at zero degrees Celsius, or more precisely, ice melts at zero degrees Celsius. So here I have ice, and then I'm converting my ice into a liquid during the melting process. And then from here, I'm again going to increase the temperature up to 25 degrees Celsius. So the zero is about right here. So here I have liquid water. Okay, now remember that when we talked about heating curves, we said that we can calculate the enthalpy change associated with the increase of temperature by multiplying the specific heat of ice, if we are heating up ice, times the mass of ice and times the change in temperature. So let's call this part of the heating curve A to B, and then the melting is B to C, and the liquid part which I'm heating up is C to D. And let's calculate the delta H, the enthalpy change, associated with A to B part. So here I need the specific heat of ice, which is 2.09 joules per grams time Kelvin. Now I need the mass. Do I have the mass? No, but I actually know that I have one mole of ice and I can convert the one mole into grams. So I'm simply going to say I have 1.00 mole and I'm going to multiply it moles on the bottom, grams on top, and one mole of water is actually 18.02 grams. And then I need to multiply that by the change in temperature. Okay, so I went from minus 50 to zero degrees, which means that the delta T is going to be 50 degrees Celsius. Do I use Celsius or do I use Kelvin here? I'm going to use Kelvin, right, because Kelvin is given here. However, because this is delta T, right, the change in temperature, I'm going to be able to simply say that 50 degrees Celsius equals to 50 Kelvin if it's change in temperature. So I'm just going to multiply it by 50 Kelvin. Okay, let's double check our units. So the Kelvins will cancel out. The moles will cancel out, the grams will cancel out, and I'm going to end up with joules. So if I do this calculation, I'm going to get 1,883 joules, which then I can convert into kilojoules because I like to work with kilojoules. So 1,000 joule is actually going to give me 1 kilojoule. So this is going to be 1.883 kilojoules. So this is the enthalpy change associated by warming up ice from minus 50 degrees to zero degrees Celsius. Okay, now let's calculate the enthalpy change associated with the melting process. What do I use here? Do I use the same formula or something else? Something else, right? I need the enthalpy of fusion, which is 6.01 kilojoule per mole. So delta H BC, right? This is the melting BC. 
part is going to equal to the enthalpy of fusion, which is 6.01 kilojoule per mole, multiplied by the amount of moles that I have, which is simply one mole. So this is going to give me 6.01 kilojoules. Okay, that was simple. So what happens when I'm warming up the liquid? I will use the same formula as in the first case when I was calculating the enthalpy change associated with warming up the ice. The only big difference is that I'm going to need to use the specific heat of water, which is right here, and I have to use a different change in temperature. So let's do this, delta H, for CD equals the specific heat of water, which is 4.18 uh, joule per grams times Kelvin, multiplied by the one mole, which I'm going to convert into grams. So moles on the bottom, grams on top. 18.02 is the molar mass of water, one mole on the bottom. And what is the change in temperature? Well, in this case, I went from zero to 25 degrees. So the delta T is going to be 25 degrees Celsius. And because this is not an absolute value, but the change in temperature, I can say that this is 25 kelvins. Okay, let's double check our unit. So grams, moles cancel, Kelvins will cancel, and I'm going to end with joules. And if I do this calculation, I'm going to get 1,883 joules. And now I can convert it into kilojoules by multiplying this by the conversion factor. So 1,000 joule is actually 1 kilojoule. So I'm going to get 1.883 kilojoules. Okay, so we are almost done. Now I know the enthalpy change for all three processes associated with the overall process. So in the last step, I simply need to add the three enthalpy changes together. So I'm going to take the delta H AB, add it to the delta H BC, and add that to the delta H of CD. And if I do this calculation, I'm going to get delta H of 9.78 kilojoules. All right. I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video.